Hello, hello, good morning. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be doing myself the honour and privilege of reading King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. Is it going to be an honour and a privilege? I don't know. I've never read King of Scars. All I know is that it is within the Grishaverse. It is, um, it stars, stars. It has Nikolai Landstoff in it from uh, the Shadow and Bone series, which is fantastic for me because Nikolai was my favourite character from that series. <laughs> Sorry, everyone else. So I'm very, very excited. I've just been on a reading binge. I've finished this um, Shadow and Bone series. I've just finished rereading Six of Crows of the Kingdom. It's got me in a massive, massive mood for these characters. So I went out, I bought it, and I'm going to read it today, or read as much of it today as I possibly can. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what it's about, except Nikolai. So uh, let's find out. Woo, stand around. Didn't have done that. Okay, so we've got Zoya in it, so I'm assuming Zoya is going to be a POV. Mm. Was I was okay with Zoya? She wasn't my favourite, obviously. She was okay. <gasps> and Nina! Oh my God, Nina's in it. Okay, okay, so we're good. We're good. It's got Nikolai, who I love, and it's got Nina, who I also love. So we are good. But okay, so so it, it officially takes place after Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, then. Probably not that far, as Nina is burdened by grief. We're going to see if this is as good as Six of Crows duology, or not as good like the Shadow of Bone series. We'll see what I think at the end. Okay, I've just finished the first four chapters, so I've had a POV for each of the characters and the weird little random POV that we always get at the beginning, which which was fun, it was interesting. I can't quite remember for the life of me what actually happened at the end of Rune Rising in regards to Nicolo. As far as I remember, Alina did drive the monster away and it's back randomly a couple of years later which will obviously be explained as we get further into the book no doubt they've got this hinting of a sort of fake relationship at the moment i guess between zoya and nikolai which i hope to god stays just a hint and stays fake because mm, mm, i don't need that in the book i don't need the romance <laughs> Not with Zoya at least, but that's partially because I don't, I'm not a big fan of Zoya. And Nina, just freaking Jesus Christ, Nina. I like that she's sort of embracing her new powers that she got at the end of Six of Crows. I love that she is sort of getting into this whole um, spy thing against all of the... the I'm not going to say the name. Everybody wants to destroy the Grisha and she's rescuing them. So that's what she wanted to do. I'm not as invested in King of Scars as I was Six of Crows Crooked Kingdom when I first started reading the first few chapters. I am more invested at the moment than when I was reading Shadow and Bone. So we've got okay hopes for this so far. I just want to see what else is going to come up and see where the story goes because We'll see where it goes. Okay, I'm the type of person who has an aversion to romance plots within <coughs> YA especially when they're not like written on the back of stuff okay and this whole thing with trying to find Nikolai a wife I'm like 
please don't have this be the main point of this story. Please don't have this entire book bar Nina be about trying to find Nikolai a wife and stuff goes wrong. Like, please don't be that. Please don't be that. I can't, I'm not going to be able to take that. This is not what I signed up for, King of Scars. Please, please, please don't make it this. Don't make it this. I beg of you. Okay, we are almost halfway through the book. It is two o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody's being loud. It's not heading into romance territory. Thank God something else came up. I'm very, very happy about that. I'm loving Nina's chapters at the moment because I suppose because I like her more than Nikolai. But oh, that scene where she buried Matthias. I was just like, oh my God, Nina. Nina, Nina, I love you. I think my problem with the book at the moment is that there's two separate storylines. Obviously, Zoya and Nikolai are one storyline going along with their pilgrimage now to the fold. And Nina's got her sort of own storyline and it's weird cutting between the two so hopefully they'll sort of merge into one I know, I know they're in different countries at the moment guys but hopefully they'll sort of merge into one or they'll link together in some way so there's not so much of a disconnect between the the three of them and yeah but I'm, I'm enjoying it so far not as good as Six of Crows but still better than Shadow and Bone and I think I think that's how it's going to remain for the rest of the book. We'll have to see what happens once we hit midpoint and further. I'm confused now. I've just started the Witch in the Woods section of King of Scars and we're at the part where um, Nikolai and Zoya and Yuri, Zuri, the, the monk dude, um, we're fighting the dragon thing and and it's the saints and now there's a new POV called Isaac and I don't know who that is and I'm getting confused I don't like it I don't like it we'll keep, we'll keep going and see where this is heading but uh yeah We are over halfway in the book now. We're here, page 389. We've, we've taken a very big turn into um, magic, which I wasn't expecting at all whatsoever. Like, obviously there is magic within the creature birds. It's been there from the beginning, but this is very, very, I don't know, spiritually magical and everything. And it's such, such a change from the beginning of the book it's such a change from the Grishaverse series both of them so far as a whole it's very I don't know it's, it's thrown me off a little bit I'm not quite sure if I'm enjoying it but we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes I'm, I'm pushing on we're pushing on I, I have found my favorite line in the book so far um but of course it is six of crows related she wished she had Inez's gift for spy work or Kaz's gift for scheming, but she only seemed to have Jesper's gift for bad decisions. And I was like, so that is those characters embodied right there in that line. And I've stuck my bookmark in it for lack of um, post-it notes and I don't write in my books. So I had to mark that quote somehow. 
so we're heading into the final final last little bit of the book now it's not exciting me as much as i wanted it to it's not making me push on it's not making me want to read it as much as i want it to want to make me read it if you get what i'm saying the storyline with nina is i don't know it doesn't fit her storyline does not fit in with zoya's and nikolai's and it's like I don't know what it's doing here, to be honest. Like, it's not a terrible storyline. It's very interesting what um, what these people are doing with the Grisha. But I don't see how it fits in with Nikolai and Zoya and Ravka. Maybe maybe we'll find out at the end what it has to do with everything. But at the moment, it doesn't fit. It feels like a completely different book and a completely different story. And, like, Nina was put into this book to make it more appealing to those who have read Six of Crows and who have not read Shadow and Bone because I'm sure there are people out there who have read Six of Crows and gone on to King of Scars without having read Shadow and Bone first and it's <clears throat> we'll see how it goes as I go into the last final bit but yeah I'm not I'm not 100% into reading it and finishing it but I'm interested enough to not put it down and keep it going for the rest of the night and we'll see last 200 pages where this is going to go and we'll see where it lands above shadow and bone because i'm very sorry king of scars but i'll tell you right now you're not going to be above six of crows or quicker kingdom for me hi holly at this point i'm just waiting for zoe and nikolai to kiss um i don't want them to but i want them to if you get what i mean <laughs> it's annoying So the darkling is back. Why is the darkling back? <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, so <coughs> it wasn't terrible. It wasn't fantastic either, which I'm a little bit bitterly disappointed about because I went in having high hopes for King of Scars, especially after Crooked Kingdom, especially because it's Nikolai, especially because it's Nina, and it was. There was such a disconnect, I think my problem is there was such a disconnect between Nina's story and Nikolai and Zoya's story. I don't know why they were put together, I don't see how they fit together. It's like, it's, it's, too, it's like two books in one, almost, like it's two short stories stuffed into one book. And it, it threw me at the beginning because I thought it was going to go into this whole... Um, territory of trying to find Nikolai a wife and I was happy when they sort of left that behind to go to the fold and I thought that would be the new story they're journeying to the fold to see this site and this black rock and then somehow finding Nikolai a wife appeared in the story anyway with Isaac's POV which that whole thing I sort of found but the story didn't need it it didn't need Isaac's POV. Like, I would have loved 
to have not had it and come in right at the end with Nikolai and Zoe returning to the palace and seeing that scene at the end where he's assassinated, that would have been epic, I think. And uh, the Darkling's back. It went from this whole whole thing about him trying to keep the phone, Nikolai, and then it sort of went into this, but the saints are returning and there's magic and it's all about the Darkling again and it's not about Nikolai and the story is not it's not even Nikolai's story I'm really sorry it's Zoya's story in the end King of Scars is Zoya's story it's Zoya's character arc it's you know Zoya's POV for the climax it's Zoya's POV at the end where we let off and it's just it's not what I was expecting it's not what I anticipated and um it's not what it says on the back <laughs> it yeah based on the back on what i assumed it would be it's not what i assumed it would be which did i read into it wrong who knows i also feel the need to point out which i realized i didn't mention a minute ago was that this whole relationship romance thing between nikolai and zoya like i called it the second that there was sort of this pretend thing between them to sort of account for Zoya being around Nikolai all the time and in his bedchambers and stuff, and I knew I knew it was going to somehow morph into actual romance between the two, and I was completely and utterly right. It did. It did. And they didn't kiss, and nothing came of it, but, so, but Zoya is so jealous of what happened at the end. I saw it coming, and I'm annoyed I saw it coming, and... I'm sort of annoyed that nothing came of it, even though I don't like Nikolai and Zoya together. And I think that's what's annoying me the most about the entire thing is that nothing actually ended up coming from it. Like, there's going to be this longing between them now. There's going to be this longing between them now in the next book. Like, I can see it. I can see it, and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I still love Nikolai, though. He's still one of my favourite characters. I didn't like him as much in this one as I did in Shadow and Bone, nor even as much as I did in his little cameo in Crooked Kingdom. I loved Nina and her arc. Um, I have no idea what I feel about Zoya. She's, it's, it feels like she's sort of like almost a repeat of um, Alina and what Alina did going after all of the amplifiers and now Zoya's got this strange new power as well and it, I don't know, somehow all of it just didn't fit together the, the different story threads didn't fit together as well as I thought they would there's too many of them what I loved about Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom was it was one storyline and they were all working towards the same goal and taking part in the same activities and the same missions and it all fit together and with this, it was just sort of like three separate stories which didn't really fit together as well as they could have or as well as they should have. So, like I thought when I started reading, better than Shadow and Bone, not as good as Six of Crows. And I expected more, basically. <laughs> we landed at that, I expected more. So that is one more book down and read. I need to get a new one now and read that. Until next time. Bye.